Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik and we've got a fun show in store for you this week. Now that spring is here, we wanted to remind you that there's a very delicious wild edible plant here in our great state to be on the lookout for. You won't want to miss that story. And with March coming to an end, we thought we'd sneak in a couple of more small game hunts before the end of the month. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're going to show you a rabbit hunt from last week where we had a tough time finding bunnies really pretty much anywhere we went. And we're going to show you a hunt where we found rabbits about every brush pile we went to. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Got a pretty cool uh, hunt just getting ready to start here. We're in northern Michigan, uh, Tails of Wagon, Chuck Connell's place, who does uh, doing a veterans hunt here for years and years and years, which is a pheasant preserve up here. But we're actually uh, doing a uh, fair chase rabbit hunt um, kind of right near their farm. A uh, bunch of kids and, and some really good dogs, and we're about ready to attack some thickets here. It's a beautiful day, only a couple of weeks left in the season. It was single digits on the way here this morning. I think it's about 12 or 14 right now, but uh, it should be a great day to chase some beagles. Uh, it's crisp, it's clear, it's a beautiful day. We're gonna get after it, it should be a lot of fun. If you jump them, are you gonna let them run, or what do you wanna do? So, um, off the bat, we're gonna get the skunk out of the bag. Okay. And uh, we're just shoot, shoot, whoever's got a shot, we'll just shoot. Uh, so we're gonna jump shoot, so somebody's probably, a little not as excited as I am for that, but that's all right. So is it a rabbit drive, or are we gonna? What are we gonna do? Yes, at first it is. We are to just to kind of get it going. We are gonna drive. We're gonna drive right through the middle of this brush. Um, the dogs are there. Uh, it's hard saying where they're gonna find their first rabbit. Uh, when they do the, if they do jump and it does get away from us, we're just gonna let the dogs take it and the dogs will do what they do. Rabbit's gonna run out 50, 90 yards, come back at us. 
will be spread out enough that we'll just stop when we hear the dogs turn. Well, as you can see here, this was some thick cover, and any rabbit we did get running wasn't really running very long. They were up and then right back under this hard, crusty snow. But with enough time, there was just a chance of getting lucky. You know what happened there? We finally got one, eh? Yeah. He come down, dogs worked him up the side of this ridge here. The boy shot at him down there, he come down through this deer trail and then I picked him up over on the next trail over. My grandpa passed away in 19 and left me this old 20 gauge side by side and uh, I've been able to hunt uh, all of the, everything Michigan's got to offer other than rabbits and pheasants so I figured today was the day to bring it over here and it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> Trick. What kind of gun? I mean it's a Lawson. Lost in 20 gauge. What's the game plan, Jason? <laughs> Launch, and then we're gonna go pick more brush. Oh. Saw a few in there, eh? Saw, well, four, three, three cottontail and a hare. Yeah? Got one, got a shot at a second. Okay, good. Below average day right now, but we'll get it going. We're gonna keep trying. It's not over till it's over. <laughs> it's been kind of an interesting day, kind of an interesting hunt. This whole thing started, um, it's been a rough winter for us getting footage for, from ice fishing to rabbit hunt. Everything's been tough just this year because the weather just hasn't cooperated in a lot of different ways. But uh, we kind of put out on Facebook, gosh, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks ago probably just just seeing if anybody's been doing good on some rabbit hunts, trying to find somebody that's been doing well. And um, Jason, guy, buddy of ours over from the Thumb, said he'd been doing, you know, pretty well. And he's like, hey, I've got some dogs if you want to go. And then um, up here kind of in kind of the northern part of the lower, uh, Chuck Connell said, who's got a beautiful piece of property here that's a, a pheasant preserve. He said, I've got quite a few rabbits. If you're more than welcome to come up here and hunt. So we kind of put this whole thing together. Um, Jason bought some, brought some friends, some kids, and a couple of beagle buddies of his, and so we kind of put this whole thing together. And um, it kind of rough conditions, not rough, beautiful conditions this morning. Pretty calm, uh, but single digits, not ideal. Uh, we got on some pretty good property, and this the rabbits were not moving this morning. And uh, it's warming up throughout the day. It's probably in the teens now, maybe low twenties. I'm not exactly sure. Um, and lots lots of tracks, but the rabbits just weren't moving. It's kind of midday now, they're starting to move a little bit more. Just kind of walking through the brush, looking for another rabbit. Cameraman stepped on him. I waited, waited. Hopefully the cameraman could get the camera on to get a video of him, and I let him have it. Give me a little recap of the day here so far. Um, been kind of boring, haven't, haven't had much action. Uh, we got three rabbits, I got two of them. Um, just really slow. Dogs are trying their hardest though. That's all that matters. Dogs are trying their hardest. Well, maybe one more? Maybe one more. He hasn't ran through yet. He's right there, he's right there. Stop, stop, I got him. I got him. Just was walking through the brush looking for the rabbits and guess we had a visitor. An unexpected visitor. Well, I guess it was kind of expected, but nice bird too. rooster, pretty bird. Now, do you do a lot of small game hunting yourself, or is yeah, this a... I do a lot. Rabbit hunting is definitely my favorite. Do a lot of squirrel hunting, a lot of it. Got a lot at my house, but pheasants definitely at, my, at the top of my list. I like killing a lot of pheasants. Well, special thanks to Jason and to all the crew that was here today, and thanks to Chuck for letting us on his ground. 
We didn't hurt the population today, but what a day to walk the woods. Not a bad day for my last day of rabbit hunting for the season here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can tell, we had a lot of fun on that hunt, but the conditions just really weren't right for running rabbits. But in this next story, we had perfect conditions and a lot of bunnies to chase. Last week I hit the woods for what is probably my last rabbit hunt of the season and I was really looking forward to hitting the woods today on a perfect day to be outside. What's our plan of attack here today? Um, basically we're just walking around uh, brush piles and the dog, you know, she'll go in there get the rabbits out. Um, okay. She'll run them. If we don't shoot them, she'll run them. Run them in a complete circle, look them back to us and uh, yeah, we'll shoot it and she'll retrieve it back to us. So nice. She'll bring it right back. And how old is this dog? Uh, she's three and a half. Three and a half. Pretty good little rabbit dog, eh? Yeah, very good. And how often do you get out doing this? Um, I normally go, for sure on the weekends, I'll try to get out you know, a couple times during the week too. Now we got that puppy, I'm working on training her too, so okay. try to get out as much as I can. So Cody and his dad Mark had contacted me and said not only did they have a good dog, but some great property. And let me tell you, they were right on both counts. I think I winged it. She'll get it. Did he hit? Yeah, I think so. Bellow, get him. Well, did we get that one? I think we winged them, so I think we did. <laughs> we'll find out here in a minute. You have to upgrade that 410 to a 12 gauge. <laughs> Even though it took a few shots, the guys did manage to put enough into the rabbit. And with good dogs, they found their prize. So you got a retrieving uh, dog there for rabbits. Yep. That doesn't yep. happen too often. Yeah. I, uh, I got a. a that rabbit sent at the store and put it in the sock. Okay. And I played fetch with her in the house for a, for a few weeks and I got her going on that. She's really? Started bringing them back. So. Nice. Yep. Well, we got one in the bag. One in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Cody had said his beagle would retrieve, and to be honest, I wasn't sure whether to believe him or not. I've only seen one beagle do that, and fortunately, we would have a few more times to see it. Yep. You, can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> Get it? We had several times today that what looked like a miss actually was just enough to slow the rabbit down. And with good dogs, they were able to find them for us on this great piece of property. Oh, this spot looked pretty promising for rabbits. It's really thick and a lot of briars in there, stuff that we don't like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, went, I found out who owned it, drove down, talked to him. Ended up being a real friendly guy, said so we can hunt it anytime we want. So. I think they just like being in the thicker stuff, so they feel safer in there maybe. So predators can't get to them. Because this property is so thick, there are so many places for rabbits to hide. We did have our fair share of jumped rabbits, quick shots, and not much to show for it as well. Oh, Where was he? Straight under here. <laughs> this was a picture perfect setup that at first seemed to have gotten away from us. <laughs> Must have been too open of a shot. <laughs> I got the only tree out there. <laughs> Once again, enough shot got through the brush, and we had found another bunny for the bag. Good girl. Good girl. Well, we did get it. Now I have to take back me making fun of your shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice big rabbit. 
Yeah, they, they're big in this field here. Right. Well, how we doing, young man? Oh, we got four in here now. It's pretty good. Yeah, good morning. We haven't even, we barely even got to where we we're trying to get to yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Only came about one eighth of it. So. Jeez, boy, these this perfect habitat and these dogs are really working well. Yep, yep, doing what they're supposed to. Good deal. Today was one of those days you really look forward to, getting to meet a father and son team that loves to hunt together. Spending time outside on one of those days where the warm sun feels so good, but yet you're walking through a foot or more of snow. Chasing beagles from pile to pile, I'm telling you, it was as good of a day as you can have in March. Well, this little dog worked hard today, found a lot of scent, and showed me a hunt which is one of the better ones I have been on this year. How did you know that, that there was one in there? Uh, basically, Bella goes up to a pile, um, if it's real thick like that, and she do, she has a certain howl that she does. And she'll do that howl and we'll walk up to it and she'll wait for us to get there and then she'll go in there and flush it out to us. <laughs> Just like textbook. Yep. Nice shot. <laughs> Thank you. So what is the takeaway from this hunt? Well, first off, when you spend a lot of time taking your kids hunting, they at some point do return the favor and take you hunting. It also made me think just how lucky we are here in this great state. Today we were chasing bunnies in the snow-covered thicket. In a few short weeks we will be chasing steelhead in rivers filled with melting snow. Then chasing turkeys in the spring woods. We as Michiganders are one lucky group of sportsmen and women. Thanks to Cody and Mark for a memorable day in Michigan's Out of Doors. This spring, while you're out in the woods scouting for turkeys and looking for those delicious morel mushrooms, there's something else to keep your eyes peeled for. It's a wild ramp, which is also known as a wild leek, and it's absolutely delicious. We're gonna go out ramp hunting. Uh, ramps are also known as wild leeks. Some people call them wild garlic, wild onions. They're all part of the Allium family. These are technical name is Allium trichocum. Trichocum, I'm sorry. Um, all in the same family as onions, leeks, garlic, shallots. Joining us today were Mike's son, Nathaniel Bennett, who would be running a drone and camera for his YouTube channel, and landowners Jeff and Pam Polonis, who are still exploring everything this land of theirs has to offer. Well, let's see, we uh, bought this property back in October, so uh, just over six months, and we've, uh, we've been hunting deer, turkey, and uh, the spring, looking at all the beautiful flowers coming up, and uh, Pam's been uh, getting on these pages for uh, foraging. foraging and stuff, and we identified the ramps and started using them to cook with our potatoes and drying some out. and Ramp uh, pesto. <sighs> Oh. It's awesome, but uh, it, 
we found out, you know, we've got it all over the property, so it's been a lot of fun harvesting it and using it, different things. It's, we're lucky to have our own property to be able to forage them. Awesome. And do you dig them up or are you just cutting the leaves? Mostly we just cut the leaves. I, I dug up this year probably enough bulbs to do a couple jars of pickled ones, but we want to make sure that we don't deplete the resource, so we're always very careful about what we dig up. We can see, you see, get down underneath, you can see the, 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 the red stalks, and if you look, you can actually see the bulbs here. There's some bulbs coming through here. But yeah, see, uh, you can see when they're bulbs like this, you can literally just pick them off. And to clean them, you just slide, there's a, an outer skin there. A lot of people literally cut the roots away, I just pinch them off. Like this one here, you just, they, well, these actually only have one leaf, but you just pluck a leaf and you can take really, normally there's two to three leaves on each stalk. And you notice these are a lot of singles here, unless they've already split. But you just take one to, you know, one leaf off each one and it's sustainable that way. You can take a whole basket full if you wanted to. Conservation is key to maintaining a good population of wild ramps. Mike says there are certain areas where they grow best. They generally are found in open hardwoods with good drained soil, heavily composted of leaves, deciduous leaves. You're not going to find them in pines. They do not tolerate pines. You want good, good drainage. I mean, wet ground is not good because it's a bulb that lives under the ground, so they will basically get drowned or rot, you know. What do you look for then when you're looking around? What's it, where should people look? Generally, it's the first green that comes up in the spring. It's a very, it's a, uh, a long leaf, six to eight inches long, usually has a green, a red stalk, about two inches wide, uh, linear veins in the leaves. There are lookalikes they have to be careful of. Can you okay. tell by just breaking a leaf and smelling it? Oh yes, oh yes. They smell strongly of onion. They're going to smell strongly of onion and garlic. Many times it's a large patch. You'll smell the patch if you're downwind of them. You know, uh, yeah, if you break a leaf and it doesn't smell like onions or garlic, it's not wild leeks or, okay. or ramps. These ramps have a great taste that's best described as a blend of onion and garlic. We did come across a lookalike plant on our way to the next patch. This here looks similar, looks very similar to ramps, okay? But this is actually trout lily, okay? But like I said, it, it's a very similar looking leaf, but you see the splotches on there. If you're interested in hunting and harvesting these wild onions known as ramps, there are some rules and regulations to be aware of. In Michigan, they cannot be harvested off of public, pro public lands. Um, state land, federal forests, uh, you know, uh, the national forests, they're protected in those lands. Um, you can only harvest them on private property. Well, there are several different ways of harvesting. And a lot of people pick just leaves. Um, you can go along and just pick one leaf off of each plant. Or if you are conservative about it and just harvest a few here, a few there, you can harvest the actual whole bulb, which there's a you know, whole bulb underneath the ground, which you'll see. But you have to be very conservative because the bulbs, they actually take three to five years to grow back. And it also it takes seven to 10 years for them to actually grow from seeds because the seeds actually require three freeze thaw cycles before they germinate. So you have to be, like I said, very conservative wow. on, how you, on how you harvest them. Uh, but ramps became an interest, you know, like I said, a couple years ago. Um, what do I like doing with them? Uh, oh, they're great in the morning with eggs. I mean, uh, stir fry, I, I do fried rice with them. One of my favorites is sauteed with some pistachios, crushed pistachios, and tossed with pasta. That one's, that one's really, really good. Uh, can you freeze them or preserve yeah, they them? Can be, they can be frozen. Um, preferably, if you vacuum seal them and freeze them, they do keep much better. They keep very well, they dehydrate well, and you know, uh, you can grind them up and use them for seasoning in soups, stews, chilies, whatever. 
I like to do a fermentation. But kind of like sauerkraut, take the bulbs, put them in a quart jar, and cover them with a two to two and a half to three percent brine, and just let them set. There are so many wonderful ways to enjoy these flavorful ramps. Today, Mike whipped up one of his favorite pasta dishes for us to enjoy. Special thanks to Jeff and Pam for sharing their land and resources with us, and to Mike and Nate for showing us how to harvest these delicious plants growing right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stick around in the next couple of weeks. We do have our big buck nights east and west to share with you coming up next week and the following week. And then we'll turn our sights to turkey hunting and spring fishing and all sorts of great things. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. Lots of places you can be checking us out. Make sure you are joining us over the next few weeks. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hand.